Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Student Bodies is put out by Smirk and Dagger, and Smirk and Dagger puts out some really fun, kind of like, take that, uh, party type games that are very easy to play, but can be a lot of fun as you backstab your friends in there. Student Bodies is a zombie game about high schoolers, and that's a really popular thing right now with Last Kids on Earth, uh, you got the Hollow that was out, a lot, of, a lot of these like spooky things are coming out for kids, and Student Bodies definitely could have been that. What you're going to get is a game... <sighs> The artwork is pretty graphic, so even while they're high schoolers, they went graphic on the art on the cards, and you know, knives through this. It's going to be pretty graphic, and it's not something you really can play with younger kids unless you allow that, then so be it. But for the most part, it's not going to fly. The game is fairly easy. It's just to run around. You get the right cards to play. You go to the laboratory, and you got to run across everything that you just went through. Who can survive? It it goes across the player elimination and kind of takes it out of the game by making you a zombie. But, I mean, one of the great strategies in this game is just to hold back, die, become a zombie. I think the game's a little bit easier to win. But I don't know that most people would want to win that way or play that way, but some people will. And be mindful of that. At the end of the, game, at the, end of the day, this is just to take that game of running around. The right card's going to help you better than not having the right cards. Uh, there's some combat and stuff in it. Eh, it's okay. It's probably the very definition of, of a 5 to me. It's, it's an alright game. It wasn't something that um, we wanted to stick around and play a whole lot. The game is a little bit too graphic for the kids. I think there's some better options for this. I mean, I don't mind graphic games. Um, I have games like Camp Grizzly that I, I quite a bit enjoy in some of those games. It doesn't bother me at all, but this is more lending to what I would play with my family. And I think I enjoy Camp Grizzly a little bit better than this. So I ended up keeping that one and getting rid of this one. Uh, for me, it's going to be a purge, but I, I can see this totally working for a lot of people. It's just not my play style. Here's Student Bodies, which is a zombie teenage game from Smirk and Dagger. It's a very large box, as you can see here. You're going to get an instruction manual, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. We're going to have a giant board, which I'll pull out. So here's what the insert looks like with everything in. You can see this is way too big and probably was there just for the board purposes. Let me pull this aside. We'll take a look at all the components. So here's the character, Kenny. Each of these will have a zombie side. You can see it's a little bit gory here, so younger gamers, beware. You're going to have Abigail, and then here will be Abigail's zombie side. You're going to have Carl and Carl's zombie side. And Emily and Emily zombie side. And finally, we'll have Dodge with his mop and his zombie side here. You're also going to get these doors that will be on standees, some lockers that will break up certain areas. Here is what a, a zombie side of something will look like. And you're going to have any number of your characters and their zombie side uh, that they're going to have here. And these are kind of the zombies that will come out on the board. You're going to have plenty of these zombies to kind of stick around. As you can see, they're all stand ease and they stand up and look pretty neat as you're going through. So that's kind of the components that you'll have. In addition, you're going to have these tiles. These are pretty thick tiles that will come out. And some of these will be used on the board as you're going through. And they're very thick. They have, you know, different things. You can see it repeats a little bit on here. You know, there's a mop and a TV, etc. I'm not going to pull all these tokens out. We're going to get any number of tokens here. These are fairly thick. You can see kind of generic artwork and characters, etc. that are on them. And here are the zombie cards you're going to see. They're going to have just kind of movement areas on them about how they're moving. Over here, you're going to see the character cards. You can see that they have pretty nice artwork on them and kind of tell you what they do, etc. They can be a little wordy. They have the movement up here on it and what they do, but they're fairly gory here, so not really kid appropriate, if you will. The cards feel good. There's no kind of linen finish to them or anything like that. They do shuffle and feel appropriately thick. Finally, this is the board. You're going to have the exit over here. This will be the main area, and then you're going to have the laboratory over here. So you can see it's a lot of hexes. Some doors where the, the zombies will spawn and then the exit that you're trying to get over here. So in the game, you'll be rushing this way and then back through the mess that you just created. So here's a rule book for student bodies. I think it's a pretty good cover right there. I kind of like that quite a bit. First thing you'll probably notice is the font is very small. Picture of all the components over here. You got a picture of setup and kind of how that works. And then, man, this is wordy, small charts. Woof. This is a lot to look at here. But you do get some examples of movements and pictures. I think this is a lot better. This font should have been larger. It's just kind of hard to see and to read. And then the stack tokens, kind of how you go through. 
Uh, and you can turn it into a zombie on this page and kind of how that works, a five-player game if you're customizing it, etc. Then on the back is just a general overview of some of the icons and some of the reference guides that you'll need. The rule book's pretty good. The font's a little small. It's a little tough to get through. I'll probably give yourself 20, 30 minutes to read through this. And there is a reference on the front, which will be helpful when, when you're referencing during the game. Generally speaking, each player is going to choose a character to be. And you're going to have a number of health. Once you have all your health and you die, you're going to flip this over and you'll be the zombie side of it. And you'll have these zombie rules. That kind of helps with player elimination. You're also going to have the stamina over here as you're moving through. And it'll kind of give you the round overview and places to put your cards down here, your items and your weapons, and then your backpack over there. So each character will move a little bit differently. And there's a little place to put your antidote if you're able to get it. Generally speaking, you're going to pick a character and be that character on one of the start spaces. When you get into the laboratory, you're going to be trying to find the antidote. Once you get over here and grab the antidote, then you will run back in here and try to scoot out the exit, which will be on this side of the board. If you're the first person to exit, then you become the winner of the game. To set up the game, you're going to shuffle up the lab cards. You're going to put one face down over here. In addition, you're going to shuffle up the exit cards, and you're going to put one in this room over here. Then you're going to take your starting character, and you're going to put them on one of the start spaces. Then you're going to shuffle up the two hallway, the hallway deck. You're going to take two of these cards, and you will put them together with the arrows. So you put them where the arrows are. And then this will be the setup of the board. You'll put the zombies on their places, and you're going to put all the little tokens where they would be, and that will be set up. Once you have everything set up, you'll be ready to go. The zombies won't be on the board. You'll have these areas that zombies can't go through, and it takes you a couple extra movements to go through, and then you're trying to go. Now, when you reach this area over here, you will flip this card, populating with all the antidotes and zombies and etc. and the same will occur when you get to the exit. You'll flip this over, and then this will all populate. So as you're playing the game, nobody knows exactly what's going to be in these rooms until they get there. Once again, you're trying to get to the lab to get the antidote and back out of the exit board over here and off of the board. The first thing you do is ready any of the items. Everybody will start out with one item, in this case, a varsity jacket. It takes an action, gain, trash it, and gain one stamina and defend all bite, bash, and knockdown attacks made against you this turn. And there's number, any number of items that you might hear, a field hockey stick, you can bash an adjacent enemy or knock down up to two adjacent enemies, bash an adjacent enemy or knock down an enemy up to two spaces away, bocce balls, remove a token, bash an enemy up to two spaces. So basically, if you use any of these, you will ready them, everybody starts the game out with one. After readying all the items, the zombies will move. If they're knocked down, they will stand up. If they're adjacent to somebody, they will attack somebody adjacent to them. So if I was here, he would go ahead and attack me. But he is not. He's not adjacent, and he will just move closer to me and move towards whoever the closest player is. I'm going to lay these down just so you can see them from above. So if the zombie was laid down, he would stand up. If he is adjacent to somebody, so say this character was here, then he would attack somebody adjacent to him. If he's not, then he would move towards the closest person. So in this case, he would move towards my person. If there is nowhere for him to move because he's locked in, there isn't anybody close to him, then he would just stand still. Then you would do that for all of the zombies. In this case, that zombie would move there because there's nobody adjacent. He was already standing, and he's moving in towards my guy that's right here. Then the player can take his actions. And one of the so-called actions are the uh, item cards I've already showed you. If it requires an action, then you can take that and do what it says. You can also travel into an adjacent hex. You may also have these student body cards that you'll be utilizing during the game. And these have actions on you can take. Give a non-player zombie two actions or two zombies one action each. They don't have to move towards or attack the nearest player. Push an adjacent enemy one space and knock them down. You may, standing when an adjacent enemy attacks you, move four spots. So these are just action cards that you'll have that you'll be able to play. And that will take up an action. Now, if you get up here to the door, you can also spend an action to open the door. You'll take this off the board, and that will allow you to run in, keeping in mind that when you do so, you turn over the lap cart or the exit space, and then you'll populate that space so now everybody knows what's in there and where they're at. There are a few other things going on. There's some weapons and zombie cards, and when these zombie cards come out, they will usually move the zombies or have them attack or do crazy things in here, or they can spawn onto the board. Now, they will spawn at the spawn locations, and then some of the starter cards you have will put spawn locations around the board to make it a little difficult. And really, the game is less about attacking and more about just kind of running around 
as fast as you can to get out of here and be the player. Now, if you ever run out of now, if you ever run out of energy, just be aware that you turn into a zombie. At that point, you are trying to kill the other players, and if you're able to succeed in that, then you can be the winner. If somebody gets out human, then the zombie players will lose. The zombie players can also die. A little bit of player elimination. But usually the game is probably coming to an end when that would occur. And that's pretty much how you play Student Body. It's a very simple game of just moving around, playing cards for actions that are in your hand, and you want to play bad cards on other people and good cards on yourself. Who should buy this game? I would say probably teenagers and above who are looking for a zombie game. You want something which is kind of easy to play. You're playing some cards, some take that. The game is beautiful to look at. I like all the miniature, or not, all the standees that are in it. I think the game looks really good. It has a really nice look to it. A little bit too graphic for our family at this point of where I would kind of put that game level at. And I have other games that do the same thing, like Camp Grizzly, that I enjoy a little bit more. So while this is a miss for me, I think this could actually play for a lot of people. So it's going to be a purge.